Hey guys, welcome back. This is Amanda with Fire Branch Farm and I just wanted to do a quick update between the rain. Actually, it's starting to rain a little bit, but we'll see what we can get through here. Just some of the herbs and vegetables that we got going. Um, been dealing with some interesting weather. We've had tons of rain, cool weather. We're almost into June and we have not had a 90 degree day, which is really weird for here. We're usually hitting 90s in uh, May, uh, it's kind of sporadically, but still we get some hot days. We have not had that this year at all. And just, it's so wet, just tons of rain and we have more in the forecast. So I thought I'd just kind of run out here and see what we could, we could get done. Um, I've also been dealing with some pest issues, of course. And one of our big pests is, I don't know if you can see this guy out here, under our uh, hedgerows out here. Let's see if we can get him right there. So we have plenty of those around and they have absolutely found the garden. And um, I can't be too upset though because I didn't put fencing up and I kind of knew we'd probably have this problem. And it's just, uh, you know, lesson learned next year we're going to, put a fence or do some raised beds and, and I don't know, we're still discussing what we want to do, but we'll be doing something different than just in the ground planting where these guys have easy access. So right here, I went ahead and put in a little herb garden this spring. This was just uh, loose rock around this center pathway here. We just had loose rock all around the side and I really hated it. Um, and then I had some people suggest putting in an herb garden because we have a door over to my right and to our kitchen and it just seemed like a really great spot and I'm so so happy I've done it. Now a lot of these are annuals. I'll have to kind of replenish this herb garden every year but that's okay. You know I'm going to harvest a lot. I'm going to dry it. Uh, I want to do a lot of stuff with for teas and different things like that. But um a lot of this stuff has come from seeds. A few of these I've bought as starts, started plants, but most of them I've, I've just grown from seed and it's it's looking great. It's not super filled in at this point, but it, it will it will get there. So first off, um, some of the cool things I've got growing in here. I've got echinacea here, and this is the purple flowering echinacea. Uh, stevia, which if you haven't grown this before, I highly suggest trying it. It is awesome. You can chew on the leaves. They're so sweet. You can dry them and add them as a uh, natural sweetener. We've got some chamomile. And this is the um, Zelotti one. It's not just the German chamomile. It's supposed to be more productive. So we'll, we'll see. I'm excited about drying those flowers for tea. And then calendula plant uh, here. And this one I'm going to try to do some skincare stuff with that. So more on that later. I tried to kind of mirror the sides a little bit. They're not perfectly mirrored by any means, but again, we've got echinacea, calendula, chamomile. I've got the marigolds, and I've got creeping lemon thyme, agastache. It's more lemon thyme, although not creeping. These little guys right here, there's two of them, are marshmallow plants. Super, super excited. Um, they are finally growing. They did nothing for weeks after I put them in, but they finally have put on some new leaves. So very excited about those. We've got a basil here, which is like a red Freddy, Gene Genevieve's red Freddy basil. Uh, common chives. We've got more chamomile. This is a cinnamon basil. And I've kind of got things repeated, as you can kind of see as you go down. More basils. Uh, that. That cinnamon basil is doing very well. We've got some um, more basil here. This is a, uh, I can't remember what this is called now. I'll have to look. Some kind of something saber. But it's um, extremely fragrant. Very good. I'm really excited about this yarrow. So I put this in as a started plant. And you can see it's already spreading. And my goal is that it will take up this whole corner here. This is creeping thyme. Look at those beautiful flowers. Oh my goodness. I would have loved to get one for the other end, but they only have this one. So I'm on the lookout. Um, hopefully we'll find this again and 
be able to put it down at the other end. Lemon balm, which I have learned is a bit of a thug. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to um, stay here or, or not. I love the smell of it, and I think it's a really pretty plant. But we'll just have to see how it behaves, I guess. Parsley there. We've got more basils there. This is a St. John's wort. Never grown this before. I think it's very pretty. I'm glad to have that one. This one is a warm wormwood. Um, and I was a little worried when I first put it in. It really wilted quite a bit. But the new growth is coming on really strongly there. And then another time. And again, it just kind of continues down that way. Over here um, is a new bed I just put in. So this is all grass a few months ago. Uh, I'm going to put an edging on here. I'm not sure what yet. I haven't decided. But we've got this beautiful sage plant here. I've seen tons of butterflies on it. We've got valerian there and there. We've got some teddy bear sunflowers that are being eaten up. See, this is some of the pest damage. And the problem is I'm spraying these things with neem oil, but it's raining so much that as soon as I spray it, you know, 24 hours later, it's washed off. So... We're kind of dealing with that. If the rain will give us a little bit of a break, it'd be better. Um, this is a lamb's ear. It's kind of a little floppy with the rain, but it's growing. I don't know if it's going to, looks like it's going to flower maybe. Got different kinds of dahlias here. Uh, there's four of them. And then zinnias, a poppy that has a beautiful flower. Finally, look at that. Um, all the others that it's put out since I have planted it have kind of looked rough and have not just they've dropped petals really soon. I think it's the weather. Some other little ground cover there, snapdragons, uh, Coryopsis plant. This one's called Nana. Very pretty. And this is a uh, cat's mint called Cat's Pajamas. So that's a Nepeta plant, which I've taken some cuttings off of this. Hoping they'll take and uh, kind of want to put a few more in here. Uh, more calendula. This one is growing really good. Oregano. Straw flower. Again, you can kind of see. I've had something eaten on them. Some more zinnias there. And another lemon balm. Which again, uh, will get harvested completely by end of season. This is a tricolor sage. It's a really pretty plant. And these are some more uh, dahlias here. These are some smaller varieties. They will not get super tall. Um, that's it for this area. Oh, I do have some lavenders here. I'm trying to keep them out of rain, so I have pushed them back against the house. They are doing okay. I'm, I'm happy. Um, and then under here, again, I was trying to keep stuff out of the rain. So I have rosemary that I've overwintered. And it's really neat. This rosemary, it's like a like a tree I, I don't know how to explain it it's not the upright kind and you know what I I can't remember what I have no idea what this one is um, I just bought it as a started plant and don't have the tag or anything anymore so but I love the way it looks I love the way it grows and then I've got two strawberry plants and as you can see look at that I'm excited about that so they've suffered a little bit again it's just been cool and wet oh got another another one in there how cool so that's just two plants um, I want to have a strawberry bed eventually I just don't know where I'm gonna put it and that's why I just put these guys in a pot for right now hopefully I've overwintered strawberries in pots before so they should be fine um, the garden's a bit of a mess the weeds are definitely getting a jump on me so we'll, we'll see we'll see how it goes um, I've got a nice line of carrots here I've got some radishes that are finishing up here and then along the corner in the weeds down here you can see better these are beets um, I had more beets growing with my other uh, lettuces and greens but the rabbits completely took them out so I planted these late but with the cool weather they've actually had a chance to get going if if I don't think they're gonna finish out and actually grow roots we will harvest the greens and eat those at least so this is garlic. So this is really interesting. Usually in the past when I've grown garlic, I've harvested at the end of May. This has shown no signs of dying back yet. So I have no idea 
when this is going to be ready. But I mean, it looks fantastic. So we'll just keep letting it grow. That is just a variety I got from uh, Walmart because I waited way too late, late to order garlic from some of the other sources. And so I went to Walmart and just got some organic garlic cloves and I stuck them in the ground. Um, this fall, I will be doing a ton more and hopefully ordering early enough to try some really cool uh, varieties. This is some more lettuce I put in. It was just a mixed kind of bag of lettuce uh, seeds that I got. And it's, it's looking great. I, I'm really surprised. I put it in late, but again, our weather's been so cool that it's just like this stuff is growing fantastic. More carrots here. I did not thin them out, as you can tell. But that's okay. I'll probably go through and eat some of these as babies. Again, I, I actually wasn't sure that these would even grow. Our soil is so, it's so heavy. And especially now that it's been so wet. Um, when this stuff dries on the top, it's like concrete. It, it like gets hard and cracked and it's terrible. We did amend some of the garden out here, uh, but I did not amend up here. So again, next year we'll be doing some different stuff. We'll see. But I'm just thrilled that some of them came up at all. We've got burdock, burdock maybe three of them here. Never, ever grown these. So we will see. You, you grow them for the roots. I've um, got a couple of dill plants that are super, super happy. They look fantastic. And another lemon balm back there. Here I've got some peas. And let me back up here. So I did kind of this structure of these stems. And they are growing. Um, so here they are. I keep wondering if I should harvest them for just shoots. Because I keep thinking they're not going to produce um, peas. Because it's going to get hot. But they are still growing. Looking great. So I have not harvested them for shoots. And we're going to wrap that one up. But we'll see. It's all just trial and error at this point. This has been a very weird year. So, And I've never grown peas before. But I love it. And next year I want to do um, more sets of this kind of um, structure. With these kind of sticks. And I'm hoping that if I... If I get it right, I'll have this whole thing grown up with peas and actually be able to harvest them as probably snap peas here. Again, we usually get pretty hot quickly, so I don't anticipate um, maybe growing them out for actual little peas to eat. But i um, got a couple peppers, jalapeno. They've suffered a little bit here and there, starting to put on a little bit of a flower. This is a poblano, and it is absolutely flowering. So we had some hail come through about a month ago and this had a little bit of buds on it and the hail knocked it all off. So these are violet sparkle sweet peppers and that's a lot of hail damage. Most of that is what that is. Um, that's why this one is like missing leaves here. The hail knocked some of the stems off. But finally we've got some good growth. It's just been so cool for them. They've just not been growing. But um, they're trying. We've got an eggplant here. Again, we've got some damage there, but um, looking good to me. I have not grown eggplant before. It actually is setting some flowers. That's awesome. These are borage. Oh, look. I didn't even see this until now. Oh, how pretty. Love it. Um, I had to put this cage around them because, as you can see, that's rabbit. Um, and that was overnight. I mean, they went from looking perfect to being chewed up. So lesson learned now I have a cage around them <laughs> and these are bush beans green beans I got two short rows almost everything came up there's a little blank spot right there for some reason but I planted the whole pack these are contender beans that I got from uh, Baker Creek and then we got some ground cherries here we've got a very tiny one we've got a big one here that is looking fantastic the difference is this one stayed inside my house a lot longer and that one down there and then this one that's had some bug damage but got a nice strong middle leaf there um were planted out early and actually right when i planted them out we had four or five days of rain and the temperatures dropped so i'm just thrilled they're still here but we do have this one this is a first year thing for me again look at that it's got a flower in there it's cool I'm excited about those. And here's my greens bed. Um, I've got a very little 
cauliflower coming in. Again, I don't think it's going to produce a big old head. It's a tiny plant. We've had hail damage and everything else on these, but um, I am going to eat that little <laughs> cauliflower. Uh, we got dinosaur kale here. That's what these are. And then I've got one little scarlet kale coming late to the party. These are all my tatsoi, which are now flowering out. I think they're very pretty, though. It's flowering out. I am going to let them do their thing. I'm going to try to maybe collect some seeds. I have never done that before um, on any kind of greens or lettuce. But I want to grow these again in the fall. I think they'll do better in the fall. But they were delicious. I loved them. We ate them fresh. We um, cooked them up and you know, stir-fried them. Great flavor. My kids even really liked them. So highly, highly recommend tat soy i got these green lettuces here from a local nursery i bought them um because i just wanted this color i thought and i don't have um i should have taken some pictures but when i would get these stuff uh when i would come and pick i would have a beautiful salad bowl so it was like the greens we had the kale the dark tat soy and then the reds of these different kinds of lettuces here. And it was beautiful. So I will definitely continue to grow a wide range of colors every year. But let's talk about the star here right now. And that is these lettuces. Can you believe it? Look at these. They're producing beautiful heads. I mean, look at that. And I've been picking out the, picking the um, outer leaves. Ew. There's a moth in there. Hmm. I've been picking out the outer leaves to eat uh, probably 10 times I've come out for salads here in the last few weeks. I'm just trying to eat them as much as I could before it completely went to flower like that. But another thing I want to state is these flowers smell amazing. They are so fragrant. Um, really, really neat. But these heads of lettuce, wow. And this one is the one, its name is in French, I believe. But it is, uh, I think it translates into four seasons lettuce. So I will be growing these again. Amazing. Beautiful, beautiful. I could, I could harvest these whole things right now, these whole heads of lettuce. And they're just, they're gorgeous. They have great crunch to them. Um, beautiful on the plate and highly productive. Very impressed. Um, here we've got Rocket. This is a arugula. It's wild rocket. It is also going to flower, as you can see there. Yep. Mm, they also smell amazing. I'm just impressed. I have still been eating on this rocket, and to me, it hasn't changed the flavor. It may be a little bit more pungent, but they're pungent to start with. I mean, it's like a peppery, but I love it in the salad bowl. It adds so much flavor. So I'm going to grow all this again in the fall. I think they'll last a little longer in the fall. And then I threw in some late radish seeds here. So we'll see if those get a chance to, there's a few more there. And that's where I had harvest all the previous radish and my uh, lovely bunnies had taken out all my beets that were, that were there. So back here, we've got some pole beans. These are these Cherokee Trail of Tears. Pole beans are black. Uh, this seed is like three years old. I threw just a little line of it there. Um, we had a few there that, kind of stunted there in the middle. They're there, but not growing great. Um, these are looking great. I'm gonna put up a trellis off the back and let them grow up. But I was hoping just to get seeds this year, or beans, to get beans for seeds. Not necessarily um, eat, have enough to eat, but just to get some fresh seeds to start with next year. And this is just an experiment. Uh, these are potatoes. I had a few potatoes that were sprouting, a bag of them. I just threw them in the ground. I don't usually grow potatoes. My dad grows a ton of potatoes and onions, and he just gives us, you know, bags full every year, so I don't typically grow them. But I thought, what the heck? These are sprouting. I'm going to just throw them out or put them in the compost pile or plant them. So I planted them. They came up. I probably need to come and mulch them, start kind of mounding them up a little bit. Uh, it's been cool enough. I wonder if they will actually have a chance to produce something. So that's kind of exciting. Um, okay, in here, amongst the weeds, I've got some more valerian. There's some more. There they are. In there. And then this is a um, lovage, 
or lavage maybe, lovage plant. It's an herb. It says that you can use the stalks like celery and the leaves like parsley. I planted a lot of these, so there, that one is doing awesome. So these do not get full sun. They get part sun, and I'm pretty impressed. It's supposed to be perennial. I've got one, two, three, and a little one over there. Four. Yes, I need to weed. And then, so here's my asparagus, which the grass is <laughs> falling over. I've got this, oh my gosh, we got all this grass. So for the future, my plan is to have a path walkway um, going beside these asparagus, down through the trees, and up and around, and looping back up into the garden. And I want to have a little wildlife pond back here, which is already a low spot. And then I want to clean out some of these under trees, these undergrowth, and I want to put woodland plantings. So, to come in the future. But you can see here the grass is laid down from this rain. Um, I need to get out here and trim it. It, <laughs> oh, that's horrible. But here's my asparagus, and I have a lot of them growing here. They're doing great. I'm very excited about this. I think, I think this will be full in a few years. Really nice little patch of asparagus. And then I've got my tomatoes. So I've got lots of varieties here. They're looking fantastic. Um, They're handling this cool wet rain. And for some reason my um, pink brandywine are getting a lot more bug damage than all my others. I will be spraying those with neem oil here in a little bit. But uh, lots of them here. This is a blue gold. I've got some more over here, and I'm putting some um, other melons and stuff down here. Cucumbers, maybe. I haven't decided yet what's going to go there. Here we go. And this is a nasturtium. This is doing well. Uh, a little bit something going on there. I think maybe a little bit of sunburn. I'm not sure, but look at this leaf, huh? It's pretty. This is supposed to be a little bit of a climber, so we'll see. Um, we are going to put another panel here. And I'm um, hoping this will climb up on the edge. So I have two full rows um, on each, and there's tomatoes on each side. Going down there. They're actually growing and looking like tomatoes. These were the oldest, the first planted. I planted this row second, and this row was just planted a few days ago. So there, there's quite a bit of a jump here. Um, it was just time permitting how I could get stuff in, and I had some bigger, older plants. Then I had some that I had started later. So. so that is it. That's what I've got. It's not a lot right now. It's pretty bare, actually. I have watermelons and different stuff started, but um, it's just been so cold, or cool, I guess, and I've just been kind of holding off. But I need to get stuff out here and get them in the ground. It's just, it's time. So it is what it is. Um, next year, maybe doing some sort of raised bed system out here just to help with the rabbit issue. Um, they have certainly eaten lots of my greens this, this spring, so. Okay, well, thank you for hanging out with me. Um, I will try to do another tour in a week or two. Uh, like I said, it's, it's go time. Things are gonna be changing really fast now. Um, we've got 80s in the next week, and it's I've actually got a few flowers on some of the tomatoes, so. But, yeah, look at these. These guys are really blooming. I love it. I wanted some color up here, so I've got some annuals going. And this bed is definitely a work in progress. But that's that's the way it is when you plant, like, perennials, like perennial garden. It's just, the, the first year, it's not going to be complete. It's not going to be mature. You just have to give it some time. And that's kind of the fun. you got to find fun in the journey. It'll take a few years before this looks filled out and looks really nice. So, Oh, let me show you this one last thing. I am loving the way this pot is looking with these beautiful marigolds. Look at those. Man, I love it with that cobalt blue and the orange. That's what I wanted. I want them to fill it out and get really big and bushy. So they are they're coming along. So we'll see. Um, thanks for hanging out with me, and we will see you next time.